welcome to another episode of Main Street Prowlers. How are you guys doing today? We're doing good. A lot nice. I am. I know, right? It's kind of weird to be back <laughs> inside Big Boy. And it's At least this week. This week, yes. <laughs> but um, with everything that's being shut down as of late, where do you guys think this league is standing as of late? Probably on a standstill right now like it did uh, last year. Right, and... Well, honest. hopefully it does only last the three weeks that she says. Right. And, <clears throat> and if it does, it won't affect nothing. Since our start date is December at the moment 18th. 18th of December. And with the current orders, too, they are still allowed to practice. Right. So that's a good thing. They just can't have fans in there. Uh, right. Jamie said good to see you guys once again. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. And... Um, we have a lot of new stuff going on. Hey, what up, Chris? And <laughs> Christopher Reese, come on. Hi, Chris. And that's, I usually have everything shared before this point. I'm just like. Yeah, you do. I'm <laughs> slacking, guys. I'm slacking. It's, <laughs> call me out. <laughs> but. That's what she said. <laughs> you're booted. I'm going to a different Let camera. See you later. Oh, strong camera. <laughs> no, shit. <laughs> I don't think but, switching cameras is going to make a difference. I'm on all three. Right. <laughs> uh, um, but <clears throat> that's the good thing, though, is that we do have the um, change in scenery, though, this week. And the, um, you're not on this camera, so let's, let's just go, Rob. Because <laughs> um, uh, you moved it again. Yeah. But <laughs> with the... Uh, uh, we have a lot of updates coming this week, and the with that, where we sh where should we start? Should we start with players, or should we start with the breaking well, news? Well, first thing is if you're if you're able to see us now, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. I hope you're having a good day. <laughs> so, um, Kevin is one of the biggest fans and of the Prowlers. Of, He's the most vocal on the team site, which is it's, it's a good thing to have those kind of fans. Oh, we need them. Oh, and, you know, that's what the team needs. You know, mm -hmm. they need their fans. Exactly, and that's someone that's essentially free marketing for the team. Someone said a little, a little bit of static. static. A little bit of static? Is that good? Oh, sorry. <laughs> but no, that's, hopefully that's something that we can take care of. Yeah. So, um, we are in the process of getting a new mic, so that's hopefully this will be the only episode with it. So just bear with us during this episode, guys. Yeah, um, Chris has a habit of dropping it out of the ground. <laughs> Rob dares me to, and <laughs> yeah, I wasn't doing nothing. But oh, there we go. That's better. <laughs> but. But yeah, definitely bear with us during audio it's issues. Like a phone next to a speaker. That's what I think you did. It was next to your phone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's where. We were. That's what it was, guys. He had his phone next to it. Sorry, guys, Bob. There we go. It's better. Anyways, with this, I know we have differing views on this, so on this whole situation. But to stay safe during this situation, what do you guys suggest staying safe during this? My, my opinion is I think they've already taken a lot of precautions in a lot of restaurants to be able to run them the way they need to oh, yes. by keeping uh, the people, you know, the customers as far away from each other as possible. Don't put um, the phone near the mic. You know, other than that, there's, you know. Right. I hope we don't go down a, a shutdown for three months again. Right. So, Rob. Um. You don't talk that much during the um, our whole episodes, essentially. You're just our moderator, so that's your time to really like get stuff that you want set out there. So, what do you think? You're... Well, with all the kids' cases starting to pop up and all that, I think the uh... How does that I know I just put you on the spot, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's um. <laughs> Everybody is, especially coming from my situation where my, 
I have a few family members where they are they do have the autoimmune disease. Chris says he's another physician. And, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's like it's you, you got two different spectrums coming from my situation to most of the world. Well, I I, I agree and I understand all that. I like I said uh, before our show started is my son's um. My, my kid's mother has been tested positive. Right. Like, you know, I don't see them no more. Her no more. I see my kids, but I don't see her no more because she lives out in Burton. But she did test positive. Right. So, and that's, it just makes it more real, unfortunately. Chris says, uh, I live in Florida, ground zero for COVA. I work with the public, and I fear I will bring home COVA every day. That, yeah, that's... Everything's more sad when you get that, that kind of fear into you, especially. Kelly um, says, I think if everyone would have taken this seriously, we wouldn't need a second lockdown. Yeah, it's, there's that too, um, because you got the people that were essentially just hugging it out, to say the, and the <laughs> nicest. <laughs> and <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's, but we're now, what, nine, ten months into this, and it's unfortunately going to become the new norm, like they've been saying. It's And it's a scary thing with to um, think about, especially coming into a hockey situation like that PHL, where they're going to be limited for yeah, the next... Yeah, especially for here. On yeah. Um, And then, Christopher says, yeah. we'll never stop without a real a national lockdown. Yeah. Where everybody has to stay home. And what do you have to say about that? Uh, if it has to come down to it, it'll... You know, unfortunately, you can't shut the whole economy down because, yeah. unfortunately, um, you shut everything down. Everything, not, everything lose money. It, and, you know... You gotta have the bit, the you know, your factories and everything still running. You can't, you can't shut everything down. There's no I way. work in the factory. Right. You know, you shut everything, everything down. You, you know, our economy will go bankrupt. Yep. Mm-hmm. You got no no money coming in to pay the taxes to to take care of the medical to take care of everything. Right. You know, I understand that. Unfortunately, you know, we got to stay healthy too. But you know, if we don't keep the economy going to a point. Right. Going to be in the kind Christopher of, made a point. There won't be an economy left. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing I don't like about the shutdown is, you know, what would happen to the economy if we did shut down for a while and, you know, no no finance coming in. Right. Kyle, Lynn, How long would the government be able to take care of us? Right. The TV is, the background is making everything really dark. Uh, the lights are uh, turned off. Yeah, so that's... Yeah, we're sitting in a dark room. Um... In the coming weeks, we'll, we've been upgrading our production slowly, okay? So we will be, like, I will be adding lights like Eric does, okay? Um, in the coming weeks, hopefully. Especially with Black Friday coming up. So. Plus, we will be in a different location next Tuesday. With the, That's a sad thing, too, with updating. As coming in to it. Big Boy won't be a viable location for our future episodes for the foreseeable future. So we will be broadcasting out of this person. Hello, guys. <laughs> Get a more <laughs> decent angle on you. It'll be uh, live in my uh, my garage. So for the meantime, and what well, should they expect coming into uh, that kind of episode, though? Uh, nothing really, other than dogs barking in the background. So, dogs barking, don't <laughs> mind them. <laughs> but, yeah, so, as, the good thing though is that we do, we are, once we are able to, um, Hello, Mr. Hurd. <laughs> um, able to go full production, we will have sponsors up here, like Big Boy is up here right now. I know you can't fully see on me. Ask Mr. Hurd where his son is. Hey, Mr. Hurd. Um, Where's Michael been? We've been missing him. He hasn't been on all season. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we, we, um, 
Hopefully get back into full production though coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. So back here. Um I so. like doggies. <laughs> <laughs> Who let the dogs out? <laughs> roof, roof. Are you talking about this one right here? No, I actually shaved. Or are you talking about that one right there? Or not a dog. All three of us. <laughs> And it's amazing though because this thing that we are now able to use four different camera angles for this. So especially when we're coming into a um, a player interview, we'll be able to switch, and that's a good thing. His company officer offers sponsorships. Okay. Oh, Chris, uh, Christopher's. Uh... So we'll definitely get a hold of you, Chris, after the show. And thank you for that. And um, do you want to get into the big news talking about COVID that was just released yesterday? Sure. Right there. Oh yeah, Mentor. Yeah, they folded. Yeah. So, what do you guys think about that? I'll let you guys read that for a second right there. No surprise to me, their attendance and all I, that wasn't great. Their attendance was all right, but with the COVID, I do agree. With last season, they were already hurt. And then this season before. With it shutting down. And then this season, not being able to have probably no fans at all for them because the arena's not all that big, is it? No. No. It's, I think it only holds, I guess, I think I told Dana, 800 max, I think. Something Maybe like that. a thousand. So with that being the case, yeah. to spread them out, how many would you actually be allowed to let in? Exactly. And is it worth it? For them to run with fans, or yeah. and not right. have the income, to, not, to, it's not like our arena. So you can take care of it. You can spread. You can prize at our arena. You can prize spread them out in like pods, like ten here, ten here, right? 10 here. Yeah, and that's and from what I understand. A lot of what it's going to be is pod no, no, no more than so many in each section, right? Spot and, and if met if no nobody. Pfft. Can't talk. I swear. <laughs> That's what she said. Man. <laughs> um, if you don't know, Mentor Icebreakers were the was the team from the Ohio in our league, and so we're that leaves us without an Ohio team for. And that makes it down. That to kills us. our road trips. Yeah. That and uh, set of eight teams, we're down to mm -hmm. seven now. And because of this, though, I don't know if you guys saw the under review prediction though. A rumor spreading. Um, as soon as that was released, they said this effectively kills the 2020 2021 season. They, in the past, they have been known for getting on the bus and saying stuff that was true, mostly. So, honestly, with that rumor, we don't know if it's true or not yet. What do you guys think? I wouldn't see them having camps still scheduled if they're afraid it was going to kill the season. Yeah. Because, right. you know, so they still got camps starting right after training Thanksgiving. Training camp is right after Thanksgiving. Right. You know, so since they still have camps scheduled, I'd say um, at the moment, Knock on wood. you know, we're, we're still a go. Right. So, and it's just, it just sucks up because the, we were supposed to have the new schedule released. I know, but with this thing, this. Where the breaking <laughs> news happened. Yes. yes it, it folded uh, yesterday. Yes, and it, we have an exact. We've played with seven teams before. Yeah. We, we have. I believe we've played with six. six. Yeah, we played as little as six. When the league first started with six teams, then the next season we went to. Uh, seven. Eight, seven eight. because Watertown came oh, back yeah, in. That's right. Seven in the third season last year. Mm -hmm. Went up to ten teams. Now we're back down. I think what three of the teams uh, said no for this season. These we have um, the team from Fraser and then Bloomington that are sitting out this year. Okay. That because of the COVID uh, oh, restrictions. Oh, uh, uh, Motor City uh, Rockets. Yes. Rockers. Oh, Rockers. Not New York City, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the um, with that though the. Um, we, those are the two teams that are sitting out, I believe. If, if I, those are all the two teams that are sitting out, right? Uh, hold on, let me. Uh, I'm gonna pull up their. Uh, 
the league's one seed. All right, we got Elmira. Uh, Mentor Icebreakers, River Dragons. Uh, where are the teams? There, there we go. We got Elmira, Denberry Hat Tricks, Folded Mentors, Watertown, Densville, Port Huron, Columbus River Dragons, North Carolina the Thunderbirds. So that's seven currently playing for the season. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Delaware. Delaware. Thanks, Scott. Delaware folded. As, um, did they, didn't Delaware actually fold? Yes. Or? Because I don't see them on the league here. No, they did. They are, um, they did sit out for this season. They that's did. right, yep. Because they can only hold like four or 500 in their yeah. ring, too. So we got Delaware, Motor City, and Bloomington, all three sitting out this season. So to answer Kelly's question from a little bit ago, we have three sitting out with seven playing. So that makes up for a total of 10 teams if you combine them all. Yeah. Uh, Jamie Logan says, now by 2021, will there be another hockey season or will they wait until 2022? I mean... We're still planning on the 2020-2021 the season as of this yeah, moment right now. But that's still developing and developing a new story to us, too. Yeah. And hopefully we'll, we have um, the, what's this, um, from the Prowlers coming on next week. Jeremy Skiba. Jeremy Skiba, who is... Um, now, you couldn't remember his name. You worked directly with him. Yes, I know. He works on my paranormal team. I'm sorry, Jeremy. I am sorry. <laughs> so, seven teams. How's that impact gameplay? That'll be 48 games. Uh, they were planning when they had eight teams, 46 games. Oh, 46. So, so, it can dramatically change it up. So, it should be probably 40 games then, right? 40 to 42, depending. And then one team will have one day or the whole weekend on a buy, which they were trying to avoid at all costs. It's something like this. Yeah. Because it's, having an even number of teams is very easy on scheduling. And... What? I'm trying to help them. <laughs> um, with that, though, we will be right back after commercial break.
Hey guys, it's Crystal from the Port Huron Prowlers. Back to you from behind the scenes. I'm with Mitz today, and Mitz and I are here to give you guys some um, examples of things the guys would like on the bus trip. Mitz, do you think the guys would like granola bars? What about fruit and vegetables? Okay, not vegetables, but how about fruit? Um, cases of water? What about some Powerade and Gatorade? Well, there you have it. Some true facts of what Mitz thinks our boys should have on the road trips. Thanks for watching and enjoy the show. Thank you. 
and welcome back. Oh, we're back? Oh, wow, I think we are back. What? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had a couple questions during the break. Um, one comes from Kelly again. Um, <clears throat> the teams that got left out, what's going to happen with them since they're not playing? Well, they sit dormant for the year um, oh, yeah. and that usually join back the following year. All right. They don't qualify for the cup or nothing. They like, just sit back and they're bumped. And, um, a lot of the players were re- are re- re- released. They still under contract with the original team, but they were released to go play on one of the other teams if they want to during the, this time. So they're mainly in the dark. At least with that, they can still get paid for the season yes. if they get chosen. So that's a good thing. And that's when we had the dispersal draft. We'll talk about that later, too. And we had a comment in the group, in the, on the uh, mm. club saying the season's, season will start December 2nd. The, that's right coming now. from Steve Miller, too, right? Yes. December 2nd was when Robo was talking about coming back for training camp. So that's where the confusion led. That was um, December 18th was the initial target date for getting the schedule out. And, uh, well, no, starting the season, sorry. And that's when they still try to plan on going. And so December 18th, as of right now, is the um, technical start of the season. But like we said before, everything can still change. Yep. Um, with that, though, um, is there anything that you need to cover before we go into our next segment, though? Not really. We Are you move on to the next one? Talking about players, too. Let's... We, we picked a lot, lot of players in the last time we were talking, guys. And the one that I'm most excited about is this one right here. Chase uh, Tippin, And I'm actually excited for uh, the return of the captain. We'll get to that later, though. <laughs> um, Chase Tippin, as you see in this picture, plays for the Water Dumb Wolves. Yes. And with that, he's um, had a lot of problems with them lately, too. Um, I think he's from Michigan anyways, isn't he? Yeah, uh, from Ontario. Oh, okay. Ontario. But he's... If either of you remember, he's had, he tried to get released from Watertown last year. And last year, he, Watertown was strictly owned by... Don Kernan himself. And he wouldn't release him because he wanted that enforcer on his team. And <coughs> so he said he played like only what, what, seven games total last year because yep. he ended up taking that suspension. Yeah. And which is sad for that kind of person because he's a great enforcer coming onto the team. And it's glad because he actually finally is able to get onto a team that he wants to play on. He because he's personally said that he's loved playing with Joe Pace, playing against him. So he's wanted to get on mm-hmm. the same team because Chase Tippin used to play down, I believe, in Texas with Pace down in tournaments as well. Yes. So that's a good thing. And. <sighs> Anyways, you ready for the next one? Yep. Are you really, really ready? Oh, yeah. I'm ready. Alex, Alex Johnson. Johnson is back. And we've talked about it before during the season, but Alex Johnson is definitely going to be one of the biggest additions to our team going into He the, was last year, too. But he was playing most of the season up in the SPHL. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's yes. right. Yes. And if you guys see, like, it wasn't, he, hi, wasn't him and uh, David Nippin, right? Yeah. So we've had oh, we Nippert. had several. Not Nippin. Nippin. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, if you guys re- see, though, we uh, we still could technically lose someone from the current roster because undisclosed yes. decisions. And te- te- what that really means is that. Um, Boys. It's someone that they're going to pick up. Boys. And I see that comment, and we've already covered this right here. William, 
um, in the earlier segment, and that's unfortunate for her with all these breakers. It is true. And yes. that's sad. Really sad because I love the rivalry with Mentor. Yeah. And I'll say Mentor all day long just to piss those people off. <laughs> 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 but because the we had a few aw- amazing people come up from Ohio. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. especially yeah. some of their fans. Yeah, they're they're amazing fans. Don't get me wrong, but when you because their technical city is called Min Minor. So when we first said Mentor, how it's actually spelled and how Minor, um, they got a little offended by that, yeah. <laughs> and which is kind of funny. <coughs> I mean, didn't you have, Dana, a uh, um, personal experience on that one, too? With No, I thought really. No, no, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just as bad as how many people come here and call Port Huron Port Huron. True. Instead of, you or, know, But it's like, I don't mind that, though. I, I don't Port mind Port Huron. That. Port Huron. It's even worse, though, when you go into Fort Gratiot, when people, especially when you're trying to tell people, over the phone, and they were like, fuck, grass you out? I was yeah. like, Ugh. <laughs> It's one of those weird things that not many people hear, unfortunately. Anyways, back to Alex Johnson. The Alex Johnson is one of the biggest additions if he can stay down in Port Huron. Yes. There's only five teams competing in this season's SBHL, but he's still a high-profile team player. So going into the season, he still he still has a likelihood of getting called up. Yeah, but you also got to look at too how many of the players that want to play for SBHL that didn't get picked that are also still able to be you know pulled into a lot of these teams. Right. You know. Right. So yeah, uh, that hopefully that helps this lower league at the moment mm. to keep the uh, SPHL players. And that's going into the um, – that actually, thank you for bringing that up. The Joe Pace just came out with a possible point system. Well, they, that's the well, – I was reading that the league come up with a point system. The reason for the point system is so they can't stack a team. Uh, exactly. A SPHL player is worth a certain amount of points. Exactly. Um, the ECHL. The ECHL, those are all worth certain. Yeah. Um, the, and that. even going from the old I, IHL to the new IHL, yeah. those are different too. Yeah. Um, and if let's get this out though before we continue. Players are worth yeah. a certain amount. But let's rookies. get this out before we continue. The point system is essentially our version of the salary cap. So yes. let's continue from exactly. that. Exactly, salary cap. That's <laughs> so. all it is. It's a salary cap saying you can't stack your team to make it where right. it's you know, And... There will be players that are worth zero points, like underdogs like Austin Federley, who was a um, big contender, which you'd think. He was on his, he was well, on his break. You know, like the rookies year. still. Cause yeah. You have to have so many um, games in before you're considered above the rookie level. Right. And, uh, and I think from what I understood, Joe said it, it went up to 300 games. Yeah, that's um. So and it used to be two fifty. So that's yeah. He was saying in this uh, show that if you're if you were a veteran last year, if you may not be a veteran, a veteran no for right. this season because of all the stuff that's going on. But the changes. Right now, that's gonna be weird. Yes. And which is understandable, you know, because that's what my biggest fear is when when they first said a lot of these players are going to be able to play here. How many of these teams are going to try and just get rid of all their regular players and bring in a whole team of SPHL. That can actually exactly. hurt the team, too. Yeah. Well, well yeah, because once everything goes back to normal, they're going to go back to their other team. Yeah. You know, so, so now players, you got no players. And those players that they let go, it's like, hello, where are you guys at? I'm not coming to you. You let me go. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, that's just your opinion, though. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Go back into that though. So, um, the um, next reveal though is gonna be another crucial one. Mike Moran. Pretty solid player. As he's coming up from the juniors, high level juniors, um, also playing for the Lake Superior State Lancers up there. I believe that was like Superior State, and yes. he did well up there. 
Very well. So having a true rookie that can hit the ice skating like that. It's another version of um, Yanni. So to have that kind of firepower coming in. He's young too. Yes, young. exactly. And yeah. that'll help get down on our points that we need. To, so we're not Is he tall or is he short? I believe he was only like 5'8", 5'9". 5'10", looks like. Yeah, something like that. But he's not overly Stuck. tall. Yeah. He's someone that will be able to get in and out of corners oh, really well. Or be like next to the net. Like yes. Tuck it right in. Right. So that's one of the good things that we'll have. We need. Exactly. So, so far we've gone over Tippin. Johnson and Moran. So, the, one of the biggest things too that we've already kind of discussed is the dispersal draft. And we were able to select four out of that dispersal draft, which I, it's possible that there might be another one over Mentor. Yes, I think maybe one or two. Yeah. That'll be it. And as you can see, we selected four players and traded one to Watertown. Anthony Puplo, uh, Joel Brask, um, Mantheus uh, Telstrom, and Cody Williams. With Puplo going straight to Watertown after we was picked in the third round. Uh, so we could get Joe DeBenny. Many people were confused by that pick. Many people, especially since it's literally as soon as he, um, Joe picked him, he traded straight away. And with that too, the um, they were like, "Why would you pick someone that you just trade away right away?" And his reasoning behind that too is that was immediately set in stone because Joe really wanted Joe Devetti, so he went straight to Watertown. And he's like, "Who would you want off this list that we can pick right now?" Exactly. So, well, but a lot of teams do that, and, you know, and in in even the regular draft. Exactly. You know, I want this person, and I know you picked before. I mean, and he ain't gonna be there by the time he gets to us. Yeah. So, um, what you can we do? Up and, we'll you trade know, you. We'll trade exactly. You. Uh, Will said, "I want to see a good knockdown drug out driver between Motor City Rocker and Port Huron." I mean, <laughs> I I agree, but you know, we'll have to wait for that one because for next season. Hopefully I next mean, season. Do you guys remember the mechanics rivalry we had? Yeah, oh, I remember that's... that. Um, Fort Wayne Vomits. You know, <laughs> I love that one. I absolutely vomits. love that one. That's, but no, especially when we had I the first. I almost got fight with one of the fans, too. During the uh, championship game. With the this other person team. right here almost got in a fight. If nobody knows, this person right here does not get mad. He does not get mad at all. No. Hey. So... <laughs> you said hey. So <laughs> I was just agreeing with him. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I don't usually get mad or anything. But, but well, yeah, I don't know if you went to the uh, Flint game. No, you didn't go that to that one. I went to the Flint Flint the one year with my kids on a um, road trip, and um, on the way out, a fan got in my kid's face saying Port Huron sucks. Oh. And my yeah. kid was only like 11 years old. Was that Justin? Yes. By the way, is our director. Yeah, he's 21 now. But oh, my gosh. 10 years yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's like, I went to say something. And I, you know, I didn't get a chance to say nothing because their own fans, you know, mm -hmm. grabbed the guy and said, you know, we don't act like that. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, I know it's rivalry and all, but stuff like that. It well, no, be. you know, to say to me as an adult is one thing, yeah. you know, whatever. But to get, to say it to a kid. Yeah. You know, that's a different, that, that's. That's the way out of line right yeah. there. But um, I, I love the rivalry the very first season Motor City was in because that was the year of the all-season NHL lockout. Yeah. Yep. And, and we had a, yeah, we pick up two uh, Red Wings play on our team. The, that was Motor City. Oh, they had, Motor sorry. oh, yeah. I remember that. The whole place was sold out. Mm -hmm. Yep. And <laughs> I believe Casey Harris was still playing with us at that time. Yes. Yes, he was. So he knew those people. He got in a lot of... Altercations. Yes, <laughs> to say the least. 
<laughs> say, hey, you want to come here for a while? <laughs> yeah, you know, if, if Casey Harris is um, a local person that owns a, a, a very good pizza parlor here. You know, they played hockey for us. You you know, was after the team folded, he decided to stay here and open a business. Right. And he was supposed to skate up for a one Yeah, the very game. last game. Yep. Last, last game, game before, uh, <laughs> before we uh, shut down. Yeah, just before we shut down, he was supposed to play in that game. Right. And it's... I, I'm sad because... I hope they can get him to, to still do it. I mean, he's still interested. He hasn't grabbed his equipment from the uh, locker room yet, from what Joe says. So... Cool. <laughs> That's, Fingers crossed. Right. I want to see him get in a fight. I mean, wasn't that's he, what, Wasn't he a scrapper? Yeah, yeah. If you, anybody cool. knows the original layout of um, Casey's, too, it, he had several um, pictures up on the wall next to the jerseys that he wore where he was in a few scraps. Mm-hmm. So he's <laughs> he took down a, quite a few uh, Flint Generals in our, his time, too, yeah. so that's... Yeah. But, I mean, you can't complain with him. <laughs> no, not really. Mm-hmm. I want, actually, I want Joe to get that cowboy. Disco cowboy? Yeah, disco that, cowboy. He was hilarious. He was hilarious, <laughs> even, on, <laughs> even on the ice and uh, in the stands, especially yeah. with us. Yes. That was he, hilarious. He, <laughs> he got his legs. He actually was a good player, too. He, yeah. he knew how to play hockey. <laughs> I love it when he was in our area. Got down the chair, got yeah. stuck in it. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, you don't jump up on the, no. on the chairs. I mean, I wish, I wish I was there for that game because that was a little bit amazing. But I was working that day. Did he came the next day when I was on the ice? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, you weren't. You didn't get to be there when he was acting like uh, goofball. All right. Oh, yeah, that was priceless. I mean, but I, I guess I. Um, kind of missed out, right? It was well entertaining, that's for sure. Timer. Shh. Oh. And the good thing about what I'm using, um, the thing that I'm using right now to run the show, I can still alter the thing too. Billy says, "Good evening," and this code cowboy was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right there, Billy. But, anyways, so what are you guys thinking so far before we go to break? Uh, William says, I cannot wait to check out how the arena looks. In person, the seats make the place bigger. Yes, it does, and I, I can't wait to see the lights. You know, Joe, um, Joe was saying that they're, they're, they're supposed to be really nice. Supposed, really supposed nice. to be a, a lake show before uh, before the game. Before now. the game, right? Now. And hey, how cool would it be if they had a projector? You know, and that's the, the that's the ice. really sad part of everything. We got all these upgrades, and we didn't get to use none of them. Mm. Yep. Right. You know, because a lot of the upgrades, you know. We're supposed to be in before the other seasons end it. Right. But you know. Well, season ended early. They went in and then did everything all they were supposed to do. Seating right. first, then lighting second. Right. It should make the place more brighter, though, with the LED lights. Full color LED lights, actually. I think Lisa's coming up. <laughs> Friendly. Right. So, you got to get her thing. Uh, she needs a um, box yeah. from Pokemon Go. All right. We're all nerds here, too. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. We're all okay. gamers and, you know, what trousers are yeah, fools. <laughs> Bricks and walls. I guess I'm probably one of the worst ones, though, because I, I fix computers and everything, so. You're a nerd. A real nerd. Yes. Hey, I was, I was part of the AV department. <laughs> I'll admit it. I was True. part of the AV department. True, so. But, um, time for, unfortunately, another commercial break. So, I, I think um, he's broken right here. So, sorry, guys. Well, I thought you were off. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey guys, it's Crystal from the Port Huron Prowlers. Back to you from behind the scenes. I'm with Mitz today, and Mitz and I are here to give you guys some um, examples of things the guys would like on the bus trip. Mitz, do you think the guys would like granola bars? What about fruit and vegetables? Okay, not vegetables, but how about fruit? Um, cases of water? What about some Powerade and Gatorade? Well, there you have it. Some true facts of what Mitz thinks our boys should have on the road trips. Thanks for watching and enjoy the show. Well, not really. I got the beat. Holy Christmas tomorrow, guys. I can't believe I let myself get caught. That one was good.
Skiba. Jeremy, what's happening, buddy? Skiba. So the one thing that I um, we forgot to talk about. Why are you wearing your mask now? Because you guys are make me sick. Oh, whatever. Um, big boy is closing down tonight for dine-in service. Yes. They are open until 9 p.m., though, that, which is a good thing. Because you can come hang out with us tonight. And we, we implore you to come out and hang out with us. Get these servers paid so they can um, have something to live off until they can get back to work. And it's, like we said, the, it, the shutdown hurts everyone, unfortunately. So that's the one thing that we wanted to come out and have some good food. Have some good food with us, have some good times. You have an hour and a half to get here to have some good food with us. So, please come out. So getting back into the um, players though, we still have a lot to go over. So some people will be happy about this one right here. Pertillo. And Fowler, which is a good thing. Pertillo is a good, a good player. He's um, a grinder and a scorer. And got them. Go on, try, still trying to get used to the camera angles. But Portillo and um, Fowler, though, both had breakout seasons last year with us. What are your thoughts on those two? Uh, Portillo, he, he was pretty good. I, I really like him. Especially uh, hitting the boards really hard and all that. <laughs> Unfortunately, our next live show will be out of a garage, so um, it'll be out of Robert's parents' garage. So, thank you. You're welcome, Grandma. And then I'm probably gonna leave, so Elena will probably cash it out. Thank All you. right, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, so out of, out of your garage then? Yeah, okay, my garage. So that, but yeah, but I mean, we'll have a live audience for that might as well, right? <laughs> But, um, they want mass. Yeah. Portillo and Fowler were much needed in the last year to get that production started. Fowler came to us, I believe, from Battle Creek, I believe, right? Yep. So, uh, no, uh, was it Mentor or was it uh, Battle Creek? One of the two. I believe it. I believe it was uh, Mentor. No, Battle Creek. Yes, it was Battle Creek. You're right. Okay. Rumble bees. Yep. Rumble. Those bees. Awesome. The dead bees. <laughs> hey, they played it some hard. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they did. They played, they played their. They played Especially their the last, the last games. Mm -hmm. of that. You know, you you know you to get dominated all season. I think if they would have been able to come back the following season, they would have proved who they were. Mm -hmm. I really do because you know you got to even give it. Like I tell people, we in Port Huron, we had a team, the Falcons. The first year they were here, they won six games the whole season. Right. Then the second year, they were the best in the, their division. They almost won the whole thing. So. Um, one game away from winning the, the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. Right. Went into the Robinson Cup and went all the way to the finals. But, hey, can't complain though. Nope. Unfortunately, things went down. They weren't in the arena they, they needed to be though, unfortunately. That, well, let's dive back into this. Um, more players, because we still have a few more buttons to go over. Yep, heard. Um, Moroso and SoCal. Good picks. So what are your thoughts on those two, since they didn't get as much ice time as Moroso, they should have? Moroso, he had a uh, solid uh, breakaway season last season. Same thing with Skil uh, Bobby Skillet. So called. So called, man. Yes. Skillets make me want Belvina Skillets, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I I love Belvita. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, um. 
the heck is that noise? It's an alarm. Distractions every episode, guys. <laughs> um, that was your uh, timer thing. No, it's one of the co- um, cooking machines. Yeah. Oh, okay. To tell but, me something. Anyways, Moroso was a scoring machine himself, too. Oh, yeah. Especially and when they both had them on the same night. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. One had a hat trick and one almost had a, 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 his second hat trick. Mm. <laughs> As Pierre Moroso up with Portillo. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't slept in 18 hours. At least that's not as bad as usual, though. Yeah, I know. Normally it's like 30 hours, 40 yeah. hours. Really? Oh, yeah. But but this new sleep machine's actually helped me. Thank God. Anyways, let's get back into this. Two fan favorites right there. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Especially Big Z. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Zulkanich lives right down the road. Down yeah. like, I believe it's Utica. So, it's... He definitely wanted to come back. He loved playing for us. Oh, yeah. And the first year he was in the league, he played for St. Clair Shores. And he was on a line with Mike Baker. Yep. And they both came over to Port Huron at the same time. Oh, yeah, definitely. And... Zolkanich absolutely loved playing with Pace. Yeah. And the bat, the one sad part about him, that first year with us, he was dropped from the roster, which not many people realize, with how good he has played since. And the other sad thing about St. Clair Shores, again, it's another arena that was not meant to be in our, in our league at all. Right. You know, we could go to that arena as fans and um, there'd be... Like 300 Port Huron fans and only maybe 10 St. Clair Short fans. Which is, we kept them alive. We we really did. And oh, we went down to uh, yeah. St. Clair Shorts that yeah. night. That's <laughs> <laughs> we had more of us than we did. We mainly had the entire East Supper down there. Almost. And that was a beautiful arena to play out of, too. Because yeah. I remember playing house hockey and going through there. And, and, and like I said, I'm not knocking the arena. I'm just saying right. size wise for a semi-pro team that was not right. it was not suitable it that had the not. same amount of capacity as Mentor though uh, Will said that is so true yes um. the one thing I noticed when we were down there you remember the uh, the air conditioner it was like halfway falling out <laughs> yeah. we were fortunately sitting right under it too right <laughs> but <laughs> I'm like that's not safe well, that was also the very first season, too, where this show became a thing. Yep. And I remember, because the very last game I went to at St. Clair Shores, my equipment had died. And <coughs> it's like I had just got done interviewing. Uh, he's now with uh, Carolina. The, um, he's a firefighter. Plays a few games in Carolina. Um, Jay Kenny. Oh yeah. So that's. Uh, Will said, "Do you do you think Motor City can survive on how fast teams come in and out?" I have to say, if it's marketed right, and that's where a lot of the issues have gone bad for St. Clair Shores and stuff. Um, they didn't have concessions. They really they didn't have. They had a minor concession, just to put it that way. Um, they didn't even have tickets. You had to Wrist buy a bands. wristband to get into the game. Yeah. And they didn't market the team. They didn't have any um, on ice type events like a lot of the teams do. Um, Grimmett says Motor City will survive considering they're in a hockey city. Exactly. And you know they're going to promote it. They're going to advertise it. And but they're also a team that's still hurting because like of not being able to play. Yes. Hello, good old and, and also the hurt from the IHL. Yeah. Which, <laughs> yeah. The yeah. person that we're not supposed to say. Where yes. we don't talk about that no more. Right. Because isn't he trying to do a baseball league somewhere now? Yeah, no, yeah. Texas. And that's, I feel bad for Texas and for that situation, but it's like they, I think it'll be the same situation like us where they need to stick it up. They need to 
make sure the fans know they'll be in there for the long run. Yes. And, <coughs> hey, Michael. But um, that's what Adam Stoya is not known for. He's not known to stick it out. He's in it to win it and or quit it. Yeah. yeah. So it's not a hit right away. That's why he left Evansville Thunderbolts of the SVHL. Because they weren't huge right from the beginning. So, and I think that plays another reason why Battle Creek folded so quick, too. It's because he was the GM over there. So, who knows? It's, he could change his ways, but his history is not on his side. So, it's either Frazier needs to go out and support this team right away, or he needs to realize that people need to gain their trust with him. Mm -hmm. So, getting into that kind of situation, things can be a little bit eerie on that one. Right. So, I mean, <sighs> I, I, I hope they do stay a thing, though. They're, that's a good playable 3,400-seat arena. Uh, but... Um, I'll make a lot of people happy with this next picture that I'm bringing up, though. Federley and Jay. Two fan favorites. We had... Federley hometown, too. Yeah. Um, Federley and Jay were both on the season last year. Uh, both on the show last year. Yeah. And it's funny because Federley, he came out during preseason, during um, their training camp week, and he said he wouldn't fight at all. But what happens down in Columbus? Yep. He fought another size of him. Well, that's a little antagonizing by Joe, I think. I think Joe was antagonizing him. Yeah. Saying, hey, get, get in the one. This and, is your chance. Um, but I don't know about you two, though, but Jay was one of my favorite interviews of last season, though. Because he's... He absolutely loved raking on Billy last year. <laughs> and he's, he meant it in goodwill, but he was someone that loved to have fun, loved to... Well, yeah, he's, he's got a sense of humor. Right. Uh, I had something and it just uh, went away. That's do, what she do, said. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> But also, though. Oh, uh, the Saginaw player, Bobby uh, from Marysville? The, um, yeah. He was, was on here. That one? Yes. Stoya and Young. I just couldn't uh, picture it. They're both local, too, Stoya and Young. Yeah. Both within the Blue Water area. Wasn't him and uh, Billy was on here, too, at the same yeah. time? Yeah. I don't think we had Stoya, though, did we? We did have Stoya. No, no, we didn't. We were supposed to, and then he went up to the SPHL. No, that was David Dipper. He also went up, too. Yeah. Yeah, and right he, when he asked He went us. up the day that we had him scheduled to come up on our yeah. interview. Then we get the notice that he, he got called up. But that was also a famous name, too, because he got suspended after throwing his stake up in the stands down in Columbus. Yeah. Yeah, so, I remember that. Yep. Which... Was like what four or five games he got suspended for? Yeah, yeah. But is another thing that's really and that was where the jury Skiba became a Skiba back, oh. backup uh, backup goalie, yeah. emergency backup goalie. Right, they went down all four of their goalies, which is a weird situation within itself. So we still wanted to see up on that ice, Skiba. Mm. That would have been a lot better to see Ooh. that. You Skiba, know. if you're still watching, I'm challenging you. Yeah. The next game we have, we you're starting. Some puck shot at you. You're starting the next game, Skiba. Mm. <laughs> In fact, we had Cal Disco Cowboy on ice. Might as well. It's Skiba versus Disco Cowboy and Casey Harris. In a shootout. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean. I root for, sorry, Harris. You know. <laughs> sorry, Skiba, but. <laughs> yeah, I think Casey would uh, definitely score. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, 
he's kind of scary to go up against. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nicest guy <laughs> to meet, though. Yeah, he he'll is. he'll make sure that you're like well taken care of at your restaurant, yes. and right. he'll personally do it for you. So that's. A, the amazing thing about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He, he still goes in the, he's in the kitchen um, yeah. almost every day. And that's the only reason why he's closed his restaurant on Sundays is because he wants to be there every day that he opens. Yeah. That, that are open. Well, and his wife was like, we're not going to have this anymore. Um, <laughs> not in a bad way, but she just wanted to have time with him, of course. Yeah. So. Plus he's a, he talks with you and all that, too. Yeah. So. All right. Um, Let's move on, because, like I said, my dog needs to eat, and my brother Talking about a eat. dog, let's bring up this picture. <laughs> David Nippard. The David Nippard. One, He's back. The one that we need to bring back on the show. I mean, we, we rag on him a lot on the show, but he's the best person that you'll ever meet. He's amazing, and... He actually came up to us. When and, he was suspended. Yes, he actually came up and sat with us in the East Upper Road and asked to be on the show. And he was excited about it, but of course, the very next day. He got drafted to the SPHL. Yeah. In which we're glad he did, you know, yeah. you know the experience. And, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's great for the guys. It's, yes. It's, and that's the whole point of our league is, you know, if they can good enough to play somewhere else, too. Yeah, and then Parsons too, I believe. He uh, Will, Will said it would be cool to move the icebreakers to Sarnia. It might do really well. No, yeah, but, not in this situation right now because of um, not being able to go across the border um, without being under quarantine and all that. For And also with Sarnia too, they have the Sting. And the Junior Stings. And, as well as the legit, Legillionaires. So they have three teams that get... We've had a Kenny... Nationals. Yeah, from Cornwall. And it didn't. The Lugineers? <laughs> Sorry, no, didn't, didn't they say the, the uh, tr- transportation or back and forth and all that just made it? Yeah, there was a lot of players that, especially on the American teams, that couldn't go over. So it's, yeah. it's an unfair situation. When yeah, you, like I think right um, our, our coach yeah. at the time couldn't. Like right now so. in the OHL, only the, uh, the American teams will have to face the American teams. And the Canadian teams will have to face the Canadian teams for now. Because <laughs> they can't cross the border. What, are they going to have their own cup? Uh, that? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking, because how is that going to work? I don't end? know. It's even worse, too, because they can't check. Yeah, um, no checking. They yeah, can't no check. OHL is no checking. That's, that's even I, worse. I thought that was crazy. How do, you, how do you play hockey without checking? Hooking. Um, so they did break it down just yesterday, though. It's like... You cannot purposely run into the person, though. All non-incidentals are okay. Right. But not you, like a physical hit or something like that. I'm just saying, you know, you, it's part of hockey. Yeah. It's just be like the same thing in lacrosse. Tell somebody you can't hit the person. Right, and you're already within a few inches of each other. Right. So, because how are you going to get the puck if you don't move? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the, that's the whole point to get the puck from them, and you know. If, if they don't love it, that's going to be pretty some some pretty high scoring games. Yeah, because <laughs> you know if you're not able to check them, they're going to be able to turn and go the other mm-hmm. way. The whole point is to right. But Parsons, though, he, um, didn't we trade him? No, he was with us the whole season. Parsons was one of our best defensemen. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was a second or third yes. line, but he played his heart out every day. Yes, he did. It was Johnson I was thinking of, yes. Yeah, because Johnson went to Danbury. Yep. So. Women's Olympic hockey can't check either. Yep. That's, <laughs> that's, that's weird, too, because the WNHL, they're not allowed to check either. At least up until this year, they were supposed to start checking this year. And that's, I don't know. Nice. Well, we got me out of here before that. Cause I, like I said, I gotta cook. Um, I gotta get my brother fed and all that. He's gotta work tonight. I mean, William's not wrong on that comment though. The OHL should model the NHL and let them hit. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. They're, but, not, prof- they're not professionals. Right. 
Well, it is professional, but semi-pro. So. Yeah, but my thing is, as you move up into different leagues, if if you don't already know how to, what you can and can't, you know, you can't do this once you get there. You know, you go from a league that you were able to hit, and then you go into a league that you can't. You know, or if you go into a league that you can, you know, it takes time to adjust to the new rules. Exactly. You know, so. you're supposed to start teaching some of these rules as they move up. Exactly. So. But, any final comments for the last 10 seconds before commercial break? No. Y'all are lame. Y'all are lame. Howdy. How about that comment? <laughs> <laughs> Either way, that's the sound for break. We'll yeah, be we'll right back, back after these break. commercials. Yep. Don't we have like two more? Hey guys, it's Crystal from the Port Heron Prowlers. Back to you from behind the scenes. I'm with Mitz today, and Mitz and I are here to give you guys some um, examples of things the guys would like on the bus trip. Mitz, do you think the guys would like granola bars? What about fruit and vegetables? Okay, not vegetables, but how about fruit? Um, cases of water? What about some Powerade and Gatorade? Well, there you have it. Some true facts of what Mitz thinks our boys should have on the road trips. Thanks for watching and enjoy the show.
Turn the mic on. <laughs> no, I cannot. <laughs> hey, what up, Jay? So, Target says hello, and they're needing you back. They miss your expertise, David. Yeah. Yeah. I worked electronics for almost a year there. Really? Yep. So, uh, thank William for that one. Yep. But anyways, let's dive right into this one. But we'll excite most people on this team. Um, and the phrase is one more year, I believe? Yep. yep. One more year. The captain. I mean, you can't go wrong with the robo coming back on the team. Mm -hmm. And maybe he'll say one more year next year. One more year. The, one uh, more year. One more year. I mean, the cup. I mean, like you were saying before, though, Rob, I wouldn't mind if robo, I mean, Parkhouse came back, but I don't see him coming back though either. That'd be a heck of a lineup right yeah. there. Parkhouse and uh, Robo. That'd be oh. a heck of a scoring lineup right there. Yeah. Robo is the basically the backbone besides Joe of the team. He's someone that will take up the lead on the ice. Someone that will Make sure that you're in line in the locker room. <coughs> Wonder what Parkhouse is doing now these days. He's working out in the ranches in California. So it's, he's making good money out there. So it's good oh, yeah. for him, yeah. And we do miss him, though. And that's good for him, though. I mean,. You can't get wrong making good money, right? No, no. Especially with something that you love. Yep, bird. So, <coughs> I mean, if there's some people that I wish we'd have back, like them and Frazier, but. Oh yeah, Frazier definitely. Yeah. He was the troublemaker of uh, the first season. He would <laughs> literally <laughs> kick your ass for like. <laughs> Yeah. Making fun of anybody on his team. <laughs> he wasn't afraid to hit a goalie either. No, he charged. Didn't it one <laughs> season, uh, the first season, they were in uh, Den uh, Daytona. I mean, uh, Day Dayton. Mm -hmm. Where he charged a goalie and they yeah. suspended for 10 games. I believe it. Yeah, something like that. I think somebody said that he threw a stick in the, st in the stands or something. <laughs> that, was that was false, false information. Yeah. But now as he would charge anybody to defend his own team. So. 
what's the next? Uh... What's the next? We're um, going back to you. Okay. We're going to give you some therapy. Hello. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think we kind of um, start wrapping up here in a few minutes. I mean, we gotta creep this person out, though, right? <laughs> so, I want to show you something that everybody will be excited about. New seats, new lighting, new everything. I mean, there's like that's a great picture right there, and. It's, they're upgrading the logos on the ice too. Oh yeah, it's more brighter. Actually. Yeah, but you yeah. know what? I still get. I like my seat better. Yep, the yeah. upper corn. Right under those banners. So. Yeah, you know, I, I like that spot. You know, it's a better spot to yell at the goalie, call him a jackass. So my question is though, if that section was not available, where would you sit? Well, you know, the sad part is my original seat was down where they turned into the box seats. Oh, snap. I was in section right there on the yeah. ice. I believe that's 23. Yeah. Oh, um, 23. Yeah. But um, then they ordered awesome. that, and I moved to section 5 for like two weeks. Then I moved over to the east uppers. I was full, I was full east upper. <laughs> so, you uh, east upper. This is my first time in this podcast as in supporting with my buddy Rob. So, Jay, what is your thoughts on the podcast then? And we'll definitely wait for that comment, right? <laughs> so, going on to the, um, where would you say if the East Upper Rowdies was not available, Rob? Ah, uh, close to it. Probably closest sec- to the goalie as possible. All right. It's closest to their goalie. It's floor level, probably. Would you be banging on the glass off your... Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> we already hit the glass heck, up above and hit we the had one. <laughs> one. Heck, we had goalies throwing their sticks at us. Right up in that... you got to be as close to that goalie as you can to, to get him off his game. <laughs> I, I mean, he physically it. threw... Remember that, Dana? Yeah. He physically threw that. it right up in our section. Uh, yeah, security came over. And, and the thing is, is our guys get... Suspensions for their sticks. The one his stick didn't, it was knocked loose and it went flying in the stands and he got a suspension. And this guy blatantly threw it at us and didn't get nothing out of it. Uh, that's, I would be rich at how many times you had you two brought up that um, incident on this podcast. Yeah, it was the first season, <laughs> the first, uh, first episode. The fourth well, episode. It, it, it's the fourth a good subject though because what we were talking about earlier, yeah. our player getting suspended for true. Games. It's relevant to that situation, you know, yes. And, <laughs> you know, and then to think about, you know, he didn't get nothing out of it. Right. Uh, I mean, and they made us give the stick back. <laughs> She's like, what the hell? Jay says, sounds good, and I enjoy playing ho- hockey video games too. So, so do I. My, my, I. I play a lot of it. So, yeah. since he's in support of you, Rob. Do you my my hockey say? scores are like 100 points to nothing. This guy is trying to steal Rob Thunder right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jay's a good friend of mine. He uh, runs JK's one Eye Gaming. Okay, so is, does he play in the league that you play in? Uh, he's sponsored with me and all that. Okay. All gaming. So, definitely a good friend then. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We've been together for almost three, three and a half years now. Nice. That's a good sponsorship then. That's a good friendship. So, um, I, I want to have, before we like leave to this podcast, I want to have a little fun with you guys. Um, especially since it's around this time of year where it's the um, a presidential election to a lot of people are pissed off. So let's have a little fun hockey style. Uh, Jay, so you guys are very knowledgeable about your team. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Well, we, well, we, we follow most of the teams that come through here. Me, uh, I think a little bit more because I also work with the Silver Stick tournaments mm-hmm. and the tournaments that Is come that through Is that even going to happen? Um, not that. hear nothing because of now with the they, other shutdown. They, they, they just announced the dates today, which is a weird thing. Really? Yeah, we haven't been officially told, though, yet. Yeah. If... The tournament's coming here yet. It's, it's, they had, the weird thing is, they announced it on their website for Port right. Huron. So it's, Which I hope. I yeah. do. It's one of my favorite things to do. Right. 
And it's the same here. It's absolutely you know, lovely. Three weekends in a row of nothing but hockey. Uh -huh. and Plus, Jay, day we and uh, players on the show every, every once a week, almost. And hopefully we can start doing that again. You know, I get the best seat in the house for that one, too. I'm uh, either in the penalty box working or I'm <laughs> up on the goal line. You get a lot of hate from most people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially the goal light when I won't turn it on. <laughs> no, no. All right. Let's you, were, well, you ready for the presidential fun hockey style? Oh, yeah. So here's the map. So, Rob, can you read the, what the red means? Republicans and the Democrats. <laughs> so the red says states with ice rinks. The blue states with more states with ice rinks. So it's funny because this essentially is a map of how the nation went. Um, and it's essentially saying that we're all alike. Yep. And we're all in it for the hockey. Yeah. Just don't take your hockey away. <laughs> we need our <laughs> hockey. I mean. I'm not even going to say that. Yeah, all, all sports. Yeah. These, kids, these kids and, you know, even the players that are already out there, you know, the kids need something to do. And, you know. Especially without, this town. You know. Right. <laughs> we're always saying that, you know, the kids are always in trouble. Well, if they got nothing to do with, a lot of times it is part of the issue, they, they go the wrong way. Exactly. You know, if you can focus them away from it, I don't care if it's sports, music, anything. We just have to mentor our kids the proper way, and if there's nothing there for them to go do, they'll act dumb. Right. You know. So. And that's why they're at the mall half the time doing stupid stuff. Were you one of those kids? Nope. I was at the, back in my my time in the '90s. I was at the the, uh, the arcade room in the mall. That's where I was <laughs> at the whole time. <laughs> hey, I, I miss that arcade too because that. I think I was at home running a, a, a bulletin board on dial up. <laughs> <laughs> dial up, I remember that. But. Especially uh, somebody. Like I said, I was AV department. Come on, you know. Yeah. Somebody was on the internet? <laughs> no, I actually, I actually had a game site. Oh, really? Right. Yes, you called my computer to play a game. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> but. Heck yeah, arcades. I agree with you on that one, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's where I was when I was a kid. But now, nowadays, there's hardly anything for kids nowadays. Right. Yeah, yeah you know, almost every party store had our, um, arcade machines yeah. for the longest time. And now is everything's home. Yep. All right. You know, my parents, when I was growing up, said, there's the door, get out. Yep, don't right. same here. You know, just be back home before That's the exactly what on. my parents did, too. Come home like, before the lights on. Mm -hmm. yep, you know. And I love my parents for doing that to me. Yep. That's how I got into hockey so much. It's it's like I wanted to be physical during it's that point. different morning. generation. Different, different mm -hmm. generation, different generation. Exactly. Different generation. It's like I, I believe that people can have that fun and the um, video games, but... You can't interact with people. Yeah. Well, I don't have an issue with that either because if you're good enough, because just like you know, if you can get enough viewers, you can actually make a business out of it. You can make money. <laughs> if that's your way of making money, right? then so be it. You know, yeah. I actually you know, I watched this one guy, he, he scratches lottery tickets on, on live video, and he's making over $60,000 in commercials Holy and funding God. through YouTube oh, wow. a month. I mean, why can't we be doing that, right? You know, Jay said we're all farts now. All farts. <laughs> well, <laughs> sure. talk about that though. <laughs> um, all right. But with that though, is there any final comments you no, want before we end? I'm not really. We're all tired here. We're. we're I know I am. We're stressed from the new orders, unfortunately, here in Michigan. Yeah. So, yeah, no, one of these days maybe we can get a 12 hour podcast going, but hey, I, I wouldn't mind that 12 hours. <laughs> Heck, we did what four hour, uh, the now the year, the year, the year, yeah. podcast, the four hours one, right? And Jeremy was part of that too, so that was yeah. <laughs> even we more fun. Good, well, we but everybody, good night, enjoy. Um, we'll see you guys next, next Tuesday. Tuesday, and until next time, stay healthy.
We were not long enough for commercials, were we? No. Okay.